All right, now it's time to start getting a little bit technical, uh, if we haven't already. We're at the phase in the game. We're dealing with these next two uh, buttons here, creating the landing page and creating the website. Now, I'm actually going to deal with these somewhat together. I was going to split them up originally, but I think they're related enough we can tackle you know, both of them in one video. But to start off with, the mission objective of your landing page is we're going to start with the landing page itself. And remember, the landing page is just a part of your entire website. We're not just going to throw up a landing page on our on our domain and that's it. And then from there, we point them somewhere else. You're going to fail if you do that. And the reason is these two objectives. You want to get them to buy and you want to avoid the slap. Now, what is the slap? The slap is when Google looks at your web page, and they look at your ads, and they look at your keywords, and they say, you stink. <laughs> Basically, they say, you know what, buddy, if you want to get any of your ads to show up, you're going to have to bid $5, $10, $15, just to get your ad clicked on. That is the Google slap, and the reason that they slap you is because they don't feel that your site is really serious. They don't feel that it's pertinent. The quality score of the site is terrible. And you've all heard you know, about these terrible stories about people getting slapped. And the reason that they get slapped is this very thing. Their site simply did not match up with the keywords that they're bidding on and what their ad is trying to say. So I'm going to show you how to pull this off where you don't have to worry about the slap. The slap does not affect you. Because you've got enough real legitimate content there that Google actually likes you and does not want to slap you. So now let me tell you more particulars about what your landing page should be and what it should not be. Your landing page needs to pre-sell the product. It needs to get them all hot and bothered about whatever this is. It needs to hit their emotions. It needs to show them their need, amplify that need. It's kind of like putting salt on wounds, right? And it needs to show them that you empathize with them and that you, most importantly, have a solution. You have the answer to their problem. That's the goal of your landing page. And remember, we're kind of looking at all of this, the ads, landing page, the website itself, the actual uh, product. Everything is all an inclusive package. The story that you're going to be presenting. It's all one thing. These are just little components of that one thing. Your landing page may or may not have an opt-in. That's kind of up to you. For our purposes, if we're at the testing phase of this product, you know, if we've weeded out some other products and we're here and now we're going to go ahead and see if, you know, it looks like this is probably a good product to promote, but we're going to go ahead and test it. We're going to run it for a few days and see if we can, you know, break even with it, for example. You don't necessarily need to do an opt-in at that point because you don't really even know that you're going to, you know, really get into this niche yet. After that phase, though, when you've decided, okay, this is a moneymaker, then you probably do want to get an opt-in in there because even if you send people to another offer, Let's say they go to the next to the actual product page and they don't buy. Well, I would rather at least have a list of people that I know are interested in this product, even if they didn't buy, because then maybe there's another product that I could market to them, or there's something that's related, something that is in the same general niche, another sub niche or something. So I want to be building that list. There should be absolutely no AdSense on your landing page. I cannot stress that enough, and I cannot get angry enough at the yahoos that I see doing this. Okay, you are paying for Google to send you traffic, and you're paying probably pretty good. And what do these people do? They put AdSense ads right on their landing page. Now, why in the world would you want to send somebody somewhere else 
where you're going to get a couple of pennies for that click, and you just paid, you know, 30 or 40 cents maybe to get them there. Does not make any sense. Never, ever put AdSense on a landing page. And you know you can get, in fact, I have done it, you can go in there and you can find sites that are your competitors and they've got AdSense and you can get your ad shown right there on their landing page. Is that not cuckoo? Okay. So you don't do it. If they're making stupid mistakes like that, then take advantage of it by all means. No long-form sales letters. That you don't want to bore people, okay? The the whole purpose, again, of the landing page is to pre-sell. Get them very excited. You want to do that very quickly. I find one of the most successful landing pages is a page with a video. Some kind of testimonial, some kind of uh, promo video. You know, you can even go out and get a really stellar promo video. Pay the big bucks. Get some, I mean, don't do it on a test, okay? But once you decide this is a good niche and you're going to make money at it and you're going to get serious, pay some money and get a really good promo made. You've probably seen a lot of them out there lately on the Internet. And let somebody in, you know, like 60 seconds get all sweaty about this solution and that they've got to have it and that they want to click through. Then once they're all hyped up, hey, let them go to the long-form sales letter and check everything out. A small squeeze page, though, equals a poor quality score. So we don't want our squeeze page to be just, hi, this is a great product. Click here to be taken to where you can buy it. <laughs> That's not enough. We do have to have information there. We need to have keywords there. We need to have H1 tags with keywords. And we need to have a little bit of content, and that's not all. If we have just a squeeze page, and this is why I was talking to you earlier about people, affiliates that just throw up one page, and then they advertise and send traffic to that one page, and then that one page has one click that they can go to where they can buy the product. Google looks at that and they go, oh, you're an affiliate marketer, and uh, you need to pay some big money for those clicks. Because Google doesn't really like affiliate marketers. So what Google needs to see is when they come, because you can guarantee when you start advertising and sending traffic there, they're going to crawl it. And when Google crawls your site, it better find some other pages. And here's what it better find. This is the minimum, and I know it looks like a lot, right? But it's not. This is the minimum of what you need to have in order to really launch your product. And... Trust me, I like to do as little work as I possibly can. So if I'm telling you that this is what you've got to have, then this is what you've got to have. It's not really a whole lot. And again, your first time through here, it might take you a while. But I could set this up in like maybe two hours from go. If you had a stopwatch, two hours, I would be done with the whole site. Okay, you're going to go find a nice template. You're going to make some modifications. You're going to save all the you know file names and whatever, and you're going to upload it, and you're going to be done. It's going to be very quick. But here's what we've got. First off, we have our homepage. Chances are nobody's really going to go there. At least most people are not going to go there. But it is one of those things that's good to have just in case somebody does. It shows you as being you know more legitimate. Google, though will crawl it. They will go. Google loves to go down in the hierarchy and crawl up. They want to crawl up to the top. So your home page needs to have just a brief welcome, maybe a little description about what you got going on, and it needs to have links to every other page in your your whole website. Now our landing page, this is where we're going to be sending the traffic directly. You're going to have three different themes for the landing page. And we will talk about that a little bit more when we doc, talk directly about the story that we're going to develop. But you're going to have three different themes. And what that is essentially is three different versions of the landing page because you want to test and find out what works better. And then next is a sitemap. A sitemap is a simple page that just has 
links to every other page on your website. And Google is looking for that sitemap. You even want to call it sitemap so that you know it's easy for them to find it. And then we've got some content. The content is going to be five to ten articles that are pertinent to this niche. You're going to quickly just go out, find some information, read something. It's not going to take you a whole bunch of time. They don't have to be all that inclusive. We're looking at 400 to 600 words. And it would be helpful if you have links to authority sites in those articles. So if it's, you know, maybe it's a, a affiliate offer about how to learn how to play the guitar, right? That Jamarama thing we looked at earlier. Well, if you've got in your articles maybe a link to a site that has guitar tab or something else, uh, you don't have to get too deeply involved in it. Just do a Google search, find something that's got some good PR a site that ranks very well, and try to link to it somewhere. Then we've got our blog. If you install, uh, or if I, I should say, if you use the hosting company that I recommended before, and also there are some others, as long as they use cPanel, there is a little feature in there that they can basically do a one-click install of WordPress. WordPress is a blogging software. It's a bro- blogging blah, blah. I can't talk right now. WordPress is a blogging platform. You push a button and you've got an instant blog. You're going to then go out, do a search for news on Google related to this niche, and just post like two or three blog entries about those articles that you read. You can even put links back to that. Then you're going to have a contact page. And the contact page is also very important because... Not only for Google, they like to see that, but the people that come to your site, some of them, they come to the landing page. If they see that contact link there, they're going to click on it out of curiosity, out of a desire to uh, trust you. So that's one way that you can alleviate some of that fear. Most people, you know, people that are trying to scam you, they don't put contact information out there. So if you can put some contact information where people can get in touch with you, They're not all going to do it, okay? but some of them will. I can tell you for sure, in my own experience, I've got contact information on my websites, on all of them. People can actually, I have a special phone number, and let me tell you about this. Go to Skype, skype skype.com. You can buy a phone number, and it will ring right right on your desktop, but you don't even have to have it on. You can get voicemail with it. It's a ridiculous cheap. It's like three dollars, uh, three dollars a month, something like that, to have this phone number. People can call it, and they can leave a voicemail. You don't even have to have it on. You can check it, you know, once a day or whatever. But it gives you a phone number that is not, you know, your house number or your cell phone or something. And people can call it. You can have a message there that you know that sounds like a company. It's really quick and easy, but it helps people see. Uh, feel more comfortable with you. I have people just that call that, and if I'm on Skype and I answer the phone, they're like, um, "Oh, it's you're a real person, okay?" And uh, can I order this right now over the phone? It helps alleviate that. Uh, and you know, if you're serious about your business, then that's something that you you, you definitely want to do. You want to help people to trust you. Then you're going to have a privacy statement. This is more than what you see typically out there on a landing page that says, uh, you know, we hate spam and we're not going to sell or rent your address to anybody. It's got to be more than that. It needs to be a full-blown privacy statement. Let me give you a little tip. Privacy statements, there are some really long ones. Go, Go to Google. Do a search for privacy statement. Find some on there that look pretty good. And you can take them and you can just tweak them. It's it's no big deal. Go there, grab it, make a copy of it, go through all the legal jargon. Most of it is like some kind of legal form anyway. But just make some tweaks to it, and you can use it too. It's They're pretty standard things. But it's got to be more, again, than just we don't like spam. It's got to be a real page that's got privacy information, you know, like your policies and all that kind of stuff. The purpose of that is not so much for the people. But it's for Google. When Google comes there, the spider crawls the site, and they're like, whoa, there's like a lot of stuff here. These people are serious. Okay, so that kind of stuff, very important. So we've got 
One, two, I'm not going to count the different themes, but I'm going to count uh, just the landing page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages right there. And then we've got some themes, some articles that we're going to write, and some posts. That's basically it. But that is your whole website. Here's your action steps. You're going to go out right now, pick a template, download the template, create your landing page and the skeleton site. That means you've got all of the pages in place and they all link to each other with the proper you know, names like About Us or Contact, whatever. Then install WordPress. Post two or three blogs. Now, if you did not um, use Matty Blaze Hosting or another hosting provider that has that instant WordPress install, then you're going to have to do it yourself manually. It's not very difficult, but I'm not going to go into you know, how to do all of that because there's plenty of tutorials on installing WordPress. It is a simple blogging uh, platform to install. Put two or three blog posts on there, then write five to ten articles and post those. Keyword rich, get some links to authority sites, the whole shebang. And that's it. Those are your action steps. I know this is pretty technical. Okay, This is probably going to be the most time-consuming aspect of the whole project. Everything. Uh, you know, all of your research, you're going to spend more time on this, trust me, than probably any other area here. But it is worth it, and uh, it's going to enable you to do the test right. Even at this phase, you want to do it right so that you can get the best results. Again, you can do this in about two to three hours. Your first time around, it might be tough. You might take you a little bit longer. But after that, two to three hours, you'll have the whole site up and ready to go. Now, you'll notice that I told you to do the landing page and just the skeleton of the site. That's because the next thing we're going to talk about is the story. This is what you're really writing, what you're focusing on, the center of everything, the ads, the landing page, the site itself, and the offer. It's all going to focus around the story. So once we have that story developed, then we go back to the landing page, we go back to the website, the home page, everything, and we incorporate that story into our whole site. And we'll find out about the story in the next video.